In this video tutorial, we're going to use C Sharp, ASP.NET, Visual Studio to create this program called a button grid. So this is a grid that is a full of pictures and you can see whenever you click on one of the buttons, the status of the button changes. So obviously the color is part of the status, but you can see in the small numbers below each button that we have a number. So the number is the pair of numbers actually. The first is the index, the second is the color number. And so as I cycle through each of these, the numbers go up by one. And then if we get to the maximum value, it switches back. So the goal here of the game is to teach you how to use a controller to update a small game grid. And the eventual goal here of the class is that we are going to have a game like Minesweeper. But this is a great simple explanation here of how to set this up. So you can see the goal here is to turn all the buttons to one color and when I do I have a message at the bottom that says all the colors match. And so this is the uh, next few videos that we're going to create called Button Grid that will bring you to how to create this uh, application right here. So let's get started with the coding on this. I'm going to start a project from scratch and take you through all the steps so that you can see how this is built. So let's create a new project and we're going to use the Visual Studio 2019. So the type of project that I'm choosing is the ASP.NET Core Web Application for C Sharp and we'll choose Next. So let's create a project and call it Button Grid. You can see all the settings here. I have no authentication. I'm going to use the newest version of ASP.NET which is 5.0 at this time and then we'll click the Create button. The first thing that I'm going to create for this project is a controller. And I will choose the MVC controller, choosing an empty project. I'm going to call it a button controller. For each button in my grid, I'm going to define that as a class. So let's create a new model. So go to the models folder, make a new model, call it a class. Let's call it button model. For the button model, I'm going to leave it as two properties. I'm going to have each button with an integer as an ID, as well as a button state. So the button state will also be an integer, and that will represent its color. Now I need to get some graphics for my program, so I am going to Google Images, and I'm choosing button icon. And just to make sure that I'm not violating anyone's uh, rights or copyrights, I'm going to choose the Creative Commons license and then find something interesting. So I like this one here. You can see that this is from Wikipedia. So this is completely legitimate to borrow. So to turn this into a variety of buttons, I'm going to right click on the image and choose copy image address. Then I'm going to go to an online photo editor. There's lots of these available. And one that I find is very easy to use is Pixlr. So when I choose pixlr.com, I have the uh, website. I'm going to choose their simple fun editor, they call it, and then I'm going to open up a new image. And I can paste in the URL from the Wikipedia page that I copied the button from. Then I can use the adjustments. So you can see if I choose adjustments and choose hue, I can have a lot of different colors. So what I want to do now is choose four different colors to make my buttons a variety of images. It doesn't really matter what they are. So you can choose hue and saturation, and that will give you a lot of varieties of colors. And you will have the exact same size picture, which is important, but different varieties. So I'm going to make a blue button. So I'll just save it and call it blue hyphen button. And then I'll make a, another one later. I'll call this one maybe, let's make it a yellow with a nice strong yellow color. And then the third, let's create one that's green. And let's see if we can find another variety, maybe purple. Purple seems to work pretty nice. And so I save each time, and these are all going to be found in my downloads folder. So I have four different buttons with four different colors of any choice you like. You don't have to use this exact same image even if you want to, but we need to have four of something different so that way the buttons look nice on the screen and they're all perfectly square. All right, now let's go include these into our program. So the location we want to put these is in the www root and then you would think that there would be a nice place here to put pictures. There's not. So let's make a new folder. So I'm going to right click and choose add new folder. And a good name for folders for images is usually IMG. So this is where we're going to put our four pictures. 
So now I go look in my downloads folder and I want to make sure that these picture names are going to work properly. So I know from experience that Visual Studio sometimes ignores things that have strange uh, characters in them. So I'm just going to put in the word purple B for my first guy and remove all of the other items that were parentheses and hyphens and everything else that possibly could make a problem. So let's do green B and yellow B so we'll have a more simple name. All right, so I got all these things named like I want them to. So I'm going to select all of them, and I think I can just drag them right into the Images folder, and they should automatically copy there. So now, if I have blue, green, purple, and yellow, they all show up there in my Images folder. The first thing I want to do in my controller is create a list where I can manage the buttons that are going to be displayed on the screen. So let's make a list of type button model and we can just simply call it buttons and we'll make a new empty list. We have to import the button model so that way it will recognize what a what of those models are. Now before I forget I'm going to set this list as a static type. That way it is not changed every time the controller runs. It will use only one copy of the list and not create a new one every time and refresh the board. So now when the controller runs I want to create a new button and put it into that list. So let's create buttons.add and we'll create a new button. And we have to define the button so I will give it as an ID of 0 and the button state we can have any random number let's say between 0 and 3. So let's make the first one 0. Now let's copy and paste a few more buttons. Let's make a total of let's say 5. And uh, for each of these new buttons let's give it a unique ID number and then so we'll set those from 0 to 4 and then for the uh, button state let's do a random number between also 0, 1, 2 or 3 so each one of those numbers will correspond to one of the colors that we've chosen. Now the next job is to send this information off to a view so return view and we specify the view name so this is optional to call it index because the method name and the uh, view name usually match by default but we'll name it index anyway just to be more clear. Then also we're going to have to send it some data and the data that we're sending is the list of buttons. So now we're going to create the view that corresponds to this. So let's go right click anywhere inside of the index method. Anywhere. And make sure that you see right click and add view. Then for the view we're going to create a view of type list because that's what we want to display. And so that's our template is list. The model that we're using is the button model and then we're going to make sure that this is a partial page that includes uh, its usual spot on the layout and then we'll click create. So let's see what the uh, computer created for us. So line one is important. It says what is our model? It is a list or really doesn't say list. It says I enumerable which is the interface that includes lists. And then we have the uh, table in front of us. So we told it to use the template of type list, which is usually a table. So we're going to see all of the button numbers and their status here. It doesn't actually print the images yet, but we'll get there. Let's see what this looks like when we run it. So it looks like the application is up and running. I need to go to the controller. So I'm going to put in a slash after the URL and type in the word button, which is for button controller. And when I do, I get the table that shows me the five different buttons that I've made with their ID numbers and their state. So it thinks of them as just a list of numbers, not really a list of pictures yet. Let's add a list of pictures. So if I want to add another column, I can simply insert that into the two areas at the header and also in the body of the table. So for the header, let's just create a, a line called a picture. So TH stands for table header item. Then down in the uh, for loop we're going to add a new TD. So a TD stands for table data and so we're going to add a new cell there. So inside the cell I want to check to see if the button state is equal to zero and if it is then I'm going to pick one of the pictures. So I'm going to insert an image. So image source equals and you can see it helpfully tells me that I can find the image folder and then pick one of the images that are in there. And so I'll pick the first one to be blue, for example. Now it's nice to have a small picture when you're working with a table. I don't want to have these massive pictures, so I'm going to set the width to 25 pixels. Now I've got one image, so I want to make four of these. So 
Right now, I'm just using an if statement, so I will copy and paste the if block, and then I will paste it four more times, or three total, three three times more, is it? Yeah. And then we've got ourselves a, a, a kind of a case statement here. So if zero is the number, then we're going to set it to be green. If it's the number of the state is two, then we'll set it to another color, let's say uh, purple. And then if it's three, then let's set it to yellow. So we're working with numbers states which are just random numbers and so we'll see what happens here let's let's run the program again All right it looks like the program's up and running so let's go ahead and switch to the uh, forward slash button and we get ourselves a small picture now so the next column shows we have zero uh, zero corresponds to blue three corresponds to did I call that yellow it looks kind of orange to me and then we got blue again green and purple so that is the status of each of the buttons. Now, instead of making a table here, we're going to turn this into a full grid and we can click on these buttons. So we've still got some work to go, but you can see how we're progressing here. So I'm switching back into the code. Now, actually, I'm not really interested in any of the table and the table rows. So I'm going to knock out anything that refers to TDs and TRs and table of any kind. So now I'm just down to the bare for loop and we're going to print those items. All right, so what do I have here? I have a slight error. It says 25 px is not a valid. Oh, okay, so apparently you don't need the px. I'm just going to leave the number uh, 25. So we have something smaller. Actually, 25 is a little bit too small maybe for my desires, so I'm going to bump that up. So let's set everything to maybe like 150 and see how that looks. So let's get to the application again, and I'm going to go to button. And now you can see that I have a list of five buttons. They're not in a table anymore, and so if I expand the size of the, of the browser, it automatically wraps around. So we're using a container in this responsive design from Bootstrap, so it automatically knows how to wrap to different rows. So we've got ourselves a 150 pixel inch wide button, and you can see that there are five. I can't click them yet, but we're going to do that in a minute. Now I want to create a bigger grid. Instead of just creating a few, I'm going to make a bunch. So let's go into the controller and make some modifications. So first of all, I'm going to delete all of the uh, items that are creating these static button uh, definitions. I'll keep one of them around. Then up in the uh, class member variable section of the class, I'm going to create a random object so I can generate random numbers. And then I'm going to set the grid size as a constant. So I think grid size is a good name for it. And let's make, let's say, 25. So we'll have a 5 by 5 grid when we're done. Then in the uh, method here itself for index, let's create a for loop. So you can just type in 4 and then press tab tab to get a for loop generated for you. We're going to go from 0 to the grid size. And then we're going to create a new button inside there. So move the buttons.add function and put it inside the for loop. Now for each um, new button, let's use the ID number as the loop counter. So that is the letter I. And then we will create a random number from 0 to 3. And to do that, you do random.next parentheses 4. And so now we should be able to see a larger grid with a bunch of randomly chosen colors. All right, let's get the application up and running again. And I choose the button pathway. And sure enough, we can see we have a whole bunch of items. I'm going to press Control minus, which will bring my button size down a little bit. And you can see the grid is now not really a grid. It's just a cluster. So we've got 25 items on the list. So now if I press the refresh, I should see that we have 25 new ones. That's not quite what I wanted. Every time I refresh this page, I get 25 new buttons because that's what the index has told me to do. Every time, add 25 when the index is run. So we might want to fix that. So to prevent this from happening, I'm just going to install an if statement to say, if the length or the count of the buttons array is less than the grid size, then we assume we haven't run this yet, and then we will add the new buttons. Otherwise, it'll just go ahead and redisplay the current list. Okay, so the app is up and running. Let's check it out. Let's do buttons. If I refresh the page, it looks like I only have 25. So that is one solution to fix this. 
All right, so let's make some major changes to our index page now. So instead of having all of these if statements, I'm just going to show you an alternative where you can maybe do this programmatically. So let's uh, get started. So at the very top, I'm going to add a style section and I'm going to have a class called game hyphen button. And so that way I can define this not just in inline style, but here in a class name. Then I'm going to define a list of all of the possible strings that a image should have, an image source. So those are really the, the file names of the uh, files that I just imported. So we'll make a string uh, array and we'll call it image names. And for each of those, we'll have blue, green, purple, and yellow. Then for the for loop, let's delete the for each loop and let's have one that actually uses the uh, for loop counter. So I equals... Uh, zero to the the count of the number of items in the model so then the reason why this works is because we can tell now how many times we've been printing buttons i want to have five per row so if we have a mod five equals zero that means we have gotten to the sixth item so we're going to put in a break a line break and then uh, after that we can go ahead and create the uh, statement to print the button on the screen again or the image on the screen and so we'll do image source and we'll take the um, now the the variable called image names and I want to get the element at item I so remember we're going through a loop here and then I want to get the button state which means it's going to be a 0 to 4 so that's a way to do a programmatic loop you don't have to do so many if statements so I don't know if this is uh, more intelligible or less, but it is certainly a way to create a blank line. Really, that's, that's what we've accomplished here. So we should get very similar results when we run the program. So it looks like I got the same results here. I've got the uh, five by five grid now. So that was the one advantage that I have here is I can control the number of items per row. So if I were to change this from a five to a six, I could have a bigger grid. So you can, um, Probably imagine that if we go into a Minesweeper program and we're building a bunch of squares, we're going to do something similar. We want to print pictures to the screen and put them in a regular pattern. All right, so now I want to print some numbers between or below each of the images that are here. So let's create a small div tag below the image. And inside of there, we're going to print the values that are in the button model. So I want to print the model at or the element at I and get the ID number. And I'll put a comma here to separate them, and then I'm going to do the button state. So we'll print the ID and button state for each of these, and let's see how this looks. We might need to fix the CSS to make them look good, but this will give us some more information. Okay, so here we go. Let's put in the word button, and let's see what we get. So now it looks to me like we have no longer a grid, but we are displaying each item on its own row. But we do have the information we're after. Let's make it look like a grid, and so it will display like a game board. So the first thing I want to do is make this into a cluster. So we're going to put a div around the entire for loop, and I'll just call it the class name is button zone. So div to begin and a end. Then up in the CSS section, let's give that button zone some style uh, markings. So what I want to do is make this a flex box. So display is flex is the name for that and then if I wanted to have the items wrap around then I type in uh, flex wrap as wrap okay let's see what that does so now you can see after I get the application running that we do indeed have everything inside a cluster now so no longer one line at a time but I don't see the line breaks either so let's fix that next so let's do a trick here we're going to put in a div and we'll give it a class name of line break. So we're erasing the break and changing it to this div. Then up in the CSS, let's change the line break definition to do flex basis as 100%. So that's like takes the entire row and then the height is zero. So that really causes a new row to occur. Okay, we get the application running and this time when we get to button, you can see that we do indeed have a new break for each row. So we're getting close. I would like to put these numbers now below each button so it displays in a square uh, format. 
So let's now attack the uh, the labels at the bottom. Let's give it a, its own class name. So for that div, which is at the bottom of the uh, below each image, let's create a, a class name. Call it button label. So for the button label, let's give it a font size of eight and let's center the text. Let's see if that handles anything differently. All right, so we're getting closer. We can see now we have the font size is very small. However, I would like to have them aligned underneath the button, and it doesn't look like I've accomplished that yet. All right, let's do some more work here. So what I need to do next is I need to surround the uh, actual button area with a new div. So let's create a div before, and you notice I deleted the comments because they can interfere here. So I want to have a new div that surrounds both the image and the label. And let's see, I'm going to call it game button. So just it's a little confusing, but I'm going to rename this one as game button image. So game button image is not defined anymore. Game button will be. So let's use that game button up here. So class equals game button. Okay, so now I've got a game button and then a game button image inside. So for the game button image, I know that it works best if it's um, slightly smaller than the entire container around it. So I will say, let's say 70% of its parent. So 70% of the game button div. All right, let's see what that gives us for results here. So I'm going to run the application again. Okay, it looks like we get some better results now. So I have myself a complete grid, and the labels are beneath it. Uh, the alignment's not quite right, but we've got what we were after. We've got the uh, ID number, comma, color number, and that seems to be the pretty good defined grid. So I'm going to go into the game button and center everything inside of that. So we'll do text align center and see if that makes a difference. Okay, it looks like I've got myself everything aligned the way I was expecting it to. So we have the items below each other as well as the centering going on. Nice. Okay, so now what we have to do is add some click events and change the colors of these so that way it looks more like a game. So that's coming up soon. All right, so now we're going to go in and do the interactive part. To make this work, I'm going to turn the entire section into a form. So forms have submit buttons in them and they can be handled with um, actions in your controller. So we'll do a form at the beginning and the end. There's no name to the form or any action, so we'll associate that in the button instead. Let's change the div for the button, game button, into a class called button. And we'll make it a type of submit. Now we need to add ASP-controller to tell it which item in our controller section is going to listen to the button click. And so the name of our controller is button. Then the uh, action in that controller doesn't exist yet, but we're going to invent it. So I'm going to call it handle button click. And so we'll create that in just a moment. So now I'm going to run the application again, and let's check to see what's inside of all of these buttons. You notice now that when I have the uh, display, I get a little hand. So these are all clickable buttons now. Let's do the inspect and see what the code is behind it. So I'm going to select the uh, selector item and pick one of these. So now you can see that the button has a type of submit. The, the form action now says button slash handle button click. So those, uh, that's what, what's the HTML that came out of this uh, the application that I just programmed. And it tells me also it should have the button name and number in here too. So one more thing here in the button, let's go and type in a value equals. So the value has to be the model element I and get the ID value. Let's see what that does. Okay, we're up and running again. So let's check this out. I'm gonna right click and choose inspect and then choose one of the buttons to see what is going on with the code behind it. So now you should see in here we have uh, a value. So value of 13 is the button that I have selected right now. And you can see above it there's 12 and then there's 11 and 10. So that here is going to be important. We can, can, we can handle a button click, change the list properties, and then redisplay the screen. So we're going to program that next. So the new method that we're going to control uh, program in the controller is called handle button click. So we'll put that right below the uh, first action. And then I'm expecting a parameter, and it's called button number. Now I know it's going to be an integer eventually, but I have to switch this to string because really that's what that number is. It's a 
string that looks like an integer. So we're going to have to do some conversions. And then when we're done, we're going to return back to the same index page. So we're going to have to modify the button array in between here. So let's go and fix that modification part next. Now the first thing I have to do is handle the button number. So I want to create an integer. We'll call it BN for a short number name. And then I'm going to have to parse it. So int.parse is one of the commands in C Sharp that you can use to do that. And that will work as long as the string is actually an integer. So now I simply want to add one to the button state. So let's do buttons element at bn and get the button state and then add one to it. So button state plus one. Now this will work great as long as we don't go beyond the number five. As soon as we do, we're going to have some kind of an out of bounds error. So we're going to have to double check to make sure that we're not above five. Now you could do that with an if statement and check to see if something's beyond a range and then subtract or whatever you want to do. But a simpler way is just to use the mod value, which is the percent sign. So mod four will mean we'll go from zero, one, two, three, and then we'll return to zero on the fifth one. So, or is that the fourth one? Anyway, it's not going to go beyond the range that we're wanting. Okay, we think we're getting close to the end. We'll see if that's actually true. So I've got the uh, screen up now and I'm going to click one of these and the application comes to a halt. It crashed it basically and it says here we got line 32 the problem says the value cannot be null so if I hover over here I can see button number is null so why didn't return any button number to me well, it's probably because I didn't define it so I'm going to have to go back into the index page to check that out so let's close the pro or stop the program and go look at index so inside of index when I created this item here I have type equals submit I have a value I forgot to give it a name. So the name has to be defined and that's called button number. I have to spell it exactly the same so that way it is passed as a parameter into the request. So button number should now be defined. Let's see if that works any better. Okay, looks like I'm, I'm almost ready to go. Let's go to button, we'll display the grid and I'll click one and this time it turned blue. Okay, great. So if I click an item, it goes hopefully through the entire cycle. It went green, pink, purple, blue, and uh, it seems to be doing exactly what I was hoping to. So not real, not real. Uh, what do you call it? Responsive. Some of my browser seems to be a little sluggish, but I do have the actual app up and running as I expected. Now I don't like these uh, borders around the buttons, so I think I'm going to try one more style change. So I'm going to go back into the style and change border on the button uh, game button to none and see if that works any better. All right, so I got a new style and let's see if this works any well like it did before. So when I click a button, certainly it changes the color. All right, I got one more challenge for you. So I'm going to show you another version that I just coded here. If I go to button, you're going to see all these different uh, display items. And the, the goal here is that I want to have all of the items match and tell me a message. So you can see down at the bottom here, it says, congratulations, all buttons match. Or if they don't, then the message continues to say, not all of the buttons match, see if you can make them all match. So if I get them all to a single color, I get a new message that at the bottom says, congratulations, all buttons match. So this is a challenge for you. Can you check to see in the code logic that all of the buttons match one color. Doesn't matter which color. They can all be green or blue or whatever you want them to be, but they all have to match each other. And so when you're done here, you're gonna have a message at the bottom. So I purposely hid the code here because I want you to figure it out. Um, there's probably more than one way to do it. And I want you to see what you can do. So there is the end of this assignment here. We've gotten ourselves the first step towards programming what's going to eventually become a Minesweeper game. And so this will take care of a lot of the details of showing items on the screen and having a state for each item on the screen and then a controller that can handle button clicks. So congratulations. Don't, don't leave yet. We're going to do some more videos on this and make this a little bit more elaborate. We're going to do things like right clicking, keeping score, and other items that are more complex. So we'll see you in a soon video.